Okay, we're back. We're charging the unit up. Uh, as I said, we moved it roughly uh, 25 feet. So we're set up here. We've been running for 15 more minutes. And the uh, fan inside just kicked up to high speed oh, five minutes ago. So the pressures by the chart. I should have uh, a sub cooling. A six, we're 1.6. So we need to add some charge as I anticipated. Uh, the manual stating that we should add uh, three ounces for every five feet. So should need 15 ounces. So we're going to uh, weigh in slowly and check our subcooling. And we should see that subcooling come up we see that super heat go down right now it's the evaporator is full of vapor it seems and our so is our uh, condenser pretty much so going to bump it up and uh, once we get it up a little bit I'll start the video up again okay we're just about done uh, get, get that where you can see it of course the reflection again is a problem wrong button that was the power button Get it back to the superheat subcooling. This where's the light. Where's the light. So we're getting our subcooling close to six now. I just made an adjustment, so it's going to float around for a little while while the TXV does its thing. But uh, you see, our subcooling is about six where it needs to be. Our superheat's down a little better. Don't have any instructions on adjusting the TXV, so assume that's factory set. Ended up uh, putting about a pound and a half in it. So, instructions said I needed to add 15 ounces for the, the length of line I added. Then I also looked at the chart and it said that it needed an additional seven ounces for the coil. And that, after I added the charge for the line set, realized that, that wasn't there. The installers that installed this originally did not adjust the charge after they installed it. Because uh, obviously we were just that seven ounces low even with the correct uh, charge for the line, so we're uh, going to give it a little, give it another 10 minutes and make sure everything sits, sits like this, if it stays like this, I'll be pretty happy. I can see that sub, uh, super heat go down a little bit and that sub cooling can come up just a touch, but hey, we're real close. We're probably within tolerances of error of, uh, the, of the meat of the, uh, the testo, so I know those thermometers are, oh, a third of a degree apart from each other. Sorry, I bounce around getting attacked by mosquitoes. So, that's it. I'm enjoying this tool. It's uh, really nice. Let's take a, give you a look at the temperature clamps. I don't know if you see that little brass rod with the wire sticking out of it. That's the actual sensor. So, there we are. Have a good time in the field, you guys. Pick one of these up. Uh, not much more than your standard manifold set. Well, I think it's well worth it. I mean, if you bought your manifold and you bought thermom separate thermometers, it cost you more. And it wouldn't calculate superheat and subcooling for you. So, uh, not to mention this does a lot more refrigerants than a standard set of gauges, but this is only going to be for R410A. As you can see in the top there, that's what's... Uh, that's what's on right now, and that's the way it's going to stay. I'm not going to run anything anything else through this. Uh, I guess I could run Virgin 22. Just don't want to reclaim or anything through it. Just, uh, I've been reading recently that you can flush uh, old lines out with Virgin 22. So at least that's the, the instructions that came with this unit said to do that. If you're going to use an old line set, and God forbid use an old coil, they said you could do that. But my God. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea. It's not, you know, I mean, how many R410A coils are you going to come across that are in the field at this point? Maybe 10 years from now, but not right now. Okay, guys. Have a good one. Bye.